Hello, my name's Karsten, and um, I thought I'd do a quick video uh, just to show how I find frequencies and how I put them into my U Uniden USDS radio scanner, my digital scanner. Um, so hopefully this will help a lot of people because it is quite tricky finding frequencies nowadays. It's not so easy anymore because a lot of them are digital. Um, so if you go back like 10 or 10 or plus years, it's, it's completely different now. So even I had trouble. So what we're going to do, um, I'm in Onslaught at the moment. Um, this is what I've got, but I'll show you how I sort of came up with that. So, um, in big cities, it might be a bit of an issue. It might be a bit more complicated, but the principle is the same. So let's pull up, uh, Google Maps. And we'll go to wherever we want to sort of, you know, center the operation. So let's try right there. Now, up here, you've got to copy and paste these coordinates, your GPS coordinates, and then go into the ACMA register, which is web.acma.gov.au. And I'll come up with this. Then you search for, you can do it two different ways. We'll go through the first one, frequency range search. You paste in your coordinates and then you select a range, say 50 kilometers. That might be a bit too much, but um, we'll do that. And then you can set your, your frequency range. So let's say I just want to find airband stuff, which is 108 megahertz to 138 megahertz. Now, I already know what's, what it's going to find. Um, Onslow Airport for one, and maybe one or two of the neighbouring airports maybe, and some Air Services Australia um, repeaters. Um, but no, it's just found the ones at Onslow Airport. So <clears throat> that's how I've found everything within that frequency range at that location. Now, these are all analogue. Um, so I'm not going to explain um, how to set them up, but I do use I do recommend you use uh, ProScan. Um, I've tried I tried the trial version for a few weeks and thought, yep, this is exactly what I need to program. Um, because a lot of the Uniden scanners now um, they'll only come with databases for the US, which is completely useless if you live in Australia. So you have to start from scratch. And there's a lot of, um, let's call them code plugs, because that's the term I, I normally use when I'm talking radios. Uh, you can get them from people over in the eastern states and stuff. But in WA, it's a bit tricky because there's no one really out there. Um, actually, I'll pull up radio reference. And I'll show you what we've got in WA. It's not really much. Um, I've added a couple of things here and there. Um, see, it straight away defaults to America, so let's get rid of that. Um, Western Australia. And you haven't really got that much. Someone's put the police in, but that's useless because that's encrypted. Um, under perf, i put a couple of things in this one. I th uh, that's oh yeah this is the one I put in Central Park but I think that one's old now I don't know if it's still used or not but that'll show you some of the frequencies it will sometimes show you which the control frequency is but there's not really much in Perth uh, in WA so yeah all right so we'll go back to Onslow I'll show you the other way of doing things is via site location map so you go into that <clears throat> and then you can also paste in your coordinates if you want to. This is going to load everything in Australia. So we'll just do that. Enter. That'll go to Onslow. And that'll show everything in the area. So we'll zoom out a bit. There you go. Wait for that to load. So this is basically if um, you're not sure what's out there and you just want to get an overview. All right. <clears throat> now, I believe the green dots are things that don't have licenses expi uh, attached to them anymore. No, they don't. 
I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Blue ones are the ones which are active. Now this one's got six, so this is the one we had before. These will be the all, all the air band ones, uh, Virgin Qantas and the uh, Onslow Airport CTAF. Uh, CTAF is Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. Uh, basically, you've got uh, controlled aerodromes and uncontrolled aerodromes. Controlled aerodromes have a control tower, and the control tower tell the pilots what to do. At uncontrolled aerodromes, the pilots tell each other what they're doing. So, for example, uh, if a pilot's about to depart Onslow, he'll say, all traffic Onslow, um, Alpha Brother Charlie, taxing for runway 03, taking off to the south. So he'll it, broadcast what he's about to do. So it's an advisory frequency. And then any other aircraft in that area will, will hear him and say, uh, g'day ABC, this is XYZ, I'm flying uh, into Onslow, I'll be there at this time and I'm coming from this direction. And they'll sort of talk amongst each other. So that's basically what CTAF is. So let's have a look at some other things. Uh, this one here, that's a salt field, so it's got 13 frequencies assigned to it. We'll just have a look to see what that is. Uh, that I think will be Onslow Salts, looking after that one. Uh, Onslow is known for salt for a bit of iron ore and I think for gas as well. Anyway, I've opened that up and this is what it is. Um, <clears throat> now you've got the emission designators. If you find, want to find out what they are, you basically just do a search for them and see what it comes up with. So the FCC is a good one. That will give you a lot of detail. So 16K0F3E it's a analog channel um, and they'll give you some more information um, straight FM so if we have a look at another one this one here so that one was in the VHF band this one's in the UHF band we'll have a look at that one we'll do a search FCC comes up again which is good now this is a digital one this is uh, now I'm not good with all my digital modes um, but it looks like it's data um, so you could probably use an SDR dongle for that and work out what it is. Um, so they've got one, two, three, they've got a couple of those. Um, what else have we got here? Let's have a look. Um, we'll go into this one here. This is a tower. That's got 10 frequencies. We'll open that one up. Um, <coughs> so this is the Pilbara Ports Authority. This one, yeah, this one is satellite, so that's probably a broadband type of data. This one, let's have a look at this one. Um, all right, so this one is a bit more tricky because it won't tell you exactly what it is. Um, but for that, we have another website called... Uh, the radio reference emission designator. So we'll do a search for that. It hasn't come up in that one either. What about Wikipedia? Um, no, that's not really much good either. So there's a couple of different um, emission designator websites you can look at just to find out what they are. Um, but this, these ones here I'd say would be comms. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Um, this one I think would be HF, a HF link maybe. Uh, these ones here will be probably, let's have a look, probably voice. No, it is, it is data. Um, so there you go. There's not really much in that one. Let's try another one. Let's try... A water tank, that will probably be data. An SES HF, well, that one's pretty easy. That one, I reckon, will be voice. Let's have a look. Okay, St. John Ambulance. So there you go. So that, that'll be voice, that one. Um, could be analog. Yes, it is analog. So there you go. You've got your first one that you can chuck in. So we probably won't go for the receiver one. We'll go for the transmitter one, which will be the repeater, which will be putting out the most power. So basically, you just copy and paste that frequency. So uh, what I'll do, 
Now, you can organize your radio in different ways. I've found that having lots of things in different favorites is a good idea. I used to have just one favorite, but now I've found it's better to have a favorite for everything. So I'll make this one favorite. I'll make this one Onslow Video. There we go. Now we're going to add a system. And it's going to be an analog or conventional system. There we go. We're going to call it St. St. John Ambos. Then we're going to add a department. Onslow. And then we're going to add frequencies. Uh, you can copy and paste that like that and there you go so that's that's how it's done um, you could probably go on that one but they'll either be handheld or in car units so it might not be as strong but this one it is a repeater because it's on two different frequencies. So whatever is broadcast in from a handheld or something on this frequency will be read broadcast on this one. So this one will be the better one to hear. Let's see what else we've got. Let's go, uh, let's have a look at that one. That's Marine Support Base. All right, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so AMSA. So there's a couple of good frequencies. Um, they're on repeater as well single channel repeater so you've got two frequencies 126025 and 161975 let's have a look at this emission designator see what this one is and it is digital f2d um it is data so you probably can't listen to it but a lot of this is sort of trial and error you know you can um, you can give it a go, see what you hear, and it's, it's all about, you know, working things out. Now, this one here, McDowell. <clears throat> so this is probably a voice frequency. Let's have a look at that. Yep, that's an analog. So that's easy enough to put in. There's one frequency. Um, not sure what they are. I think they might be a construction company. Um, let's have a look at this one, the police station. Now these will be HF and P25, so you won't be able to listen to them. So they're all the HF. You might be able to listen to, is the HF encrypted? I've, I've got a feeling it would be. Um, <clears throat> no, so it probably isn't. So if you do have a scanner that can go that low, um, that might be something interesting to listen to. It could be data as well. Um, these are your voice ones, but they would be encrypted. Um, why is that one? Okay, so there's two in the UHF band. One's this emission designator. Oops. Let's see what this one is. I didn't copy and paste. All right, it's not finding that one. Um, but this one here, I'd say would be, all right, that's analog, that one. So there you go. Um, yeah, all right. I won't spend too much time on that because the police, they're, it's, it's not really worth listening to them nowadays. Um, they're mostly all encrypted. Let's search, what have we got here? We've got, It's taking too long. Um, AMSA, search and rescue. Then we've got this one, radar. Um, University of WA. What's this one here? All right, Telstra Exchange. This has got 30, so this is a big radio site. Uh, mostly Telstra. Some Woodside, that would probably be a voice one as well. Telstra, this would be an uplink. So let's search for that one and see what that one is. Um, 
Right, that's a voice one. So uh, we'll go for the transmitter one. Copy that. Go back into there. Let's make a new system conventional uh, wood side. Let's make a new department onslow. And let's make a frequency. Paste that one there. There you go, that's that done. I'll just, there we go. Um, yeah, so what else have we got? Um, there's the hospital. Some hospitals are not encrypted. But just remember, whatever you hear, you must not act on that information. That's what the law says. And what's this one here? That's just a small one. Broadcast Australia, that's probably radio and TV. Councils, let's have a look at that one. SES, that's 32 on that one. All right, so St John Ambulance. Um, these would be voice, I reckon. I think we've already got those. These would be possibly data, um, DFIS, that'll be analog, that one. So I've just added that as a conventional. Uh, this one's Telstra and Optus, ABC, well, that's FM radio, so that one there, 184. Okay, that's an interesting one. wonder what that one is. It doesn't tell me. That's a broadcast one, most likely. Um, Shire of Ashburton. There's one for Onslow Salt. That's probably one of their radio channels. <coughs> yeah. Um, and a lot for DFIS. Now, I'll show you a trick. If you go to um, a site that has a lot of frequencies on it like in a big city let's go to perf and you have excuse the slow loading it i mean onslow and 4g is yeah well it's yeah. uh let's go to um let's go to central park i haven't actually looked at central park the central park building which is right there on the corner of william and st george's and hay street uh, Bankwest has some things as well. I'm sure a couple of these buildings would have um, some um, radio gear on them, and this could take a while to load. Now, with this website, you can also filter things, I think, uh, with this one here. You can filter by, um, where is it now? By frequency ranges there, and a whole bunch of filtering. Okay, way back. That took a while to load. All right, so we've got a couple here at Central Park now. Remember, location may be different to the site. So it could be that this one here, which it isn't, but this one here could be over there. So you just got to remember that. So let's pull up this one. This will be a mobile phone. That's got 169 assignments. This one here, Central Park, 16. We'll load that one. Oops. This one here, 8. Uh, this one here, an Optus site. This one here, 168 as well. There we go, what's this one? Uh, I'll have a look at that one as well. That one's out. All right, so, and the AMP tower, we'll have a look at that one. So, let's have a look at this one. So, all right, this one's got a whole bunch of stuff um, and 169 assignments. So, I'll show you an easy way of. Uh, filtering all the crap out that you don't want. So you've got to copy and paste from the ID all the way down to there. Control C to copy. Fire up Excel. Fire up a blank worksheet, worksheet and just paste. And then go down the bottom to the end. Go to that one there. Go back, go to the next page. And then copy and paste, not from the headers, but from here, 
down to the bottom and then paste that and so that's it um, then you'll want to resize it all click there double click there oh, that didn't work there we go now the next thing you want to do is you want to click sort filter and filter um, I'll just make that background a bit easier to see um, so <clears throat> this will let you filter different things so under client you can take out all of the Optus stuff like that or the Telstra stuff or the Vodafone stuff like that and it's just leaving a cow and B cow now I've seen them before I can't really remember what they are but they're at Optus Stadium as well so they'll just show you all that stuff there um, there's nothing I'm interested in that one so I'll close that one don't save I'll open up a new one and we'll go on to the next um, radio site which is this one here oh there we go got some TV broadcasting stuff that's interesting okay so we know what that one is we're not interested in that if you want to look at that switch your TV on all right what have we got here we've got um, Okay, so I've got digital radio broadcasting. We've got some high gigahertz stuff and some Optus Mobile. Not really interested in that one, so I'll try the next one. Optus Mobile, not really interested in that because we know what that is. You can't listen to mobile phones. All right, next one up. This is another one with 168 assignments. you got some CES Crosscom. That could be interesting. you got some Ambo stuff. All right, so we'll we'll do the same with that. We'll copy and paste that. Um, you can also do that before you paste it. Here we go. Go on to the next page. Copy and paste that. Done. All right, so let's filter out the stuff that we don't want. Up the top, filter. Here, we. All right, what don't we want? We don't want. Let's get rid of the WA police. They're encrypted, so that's useless to us. Um. Let's get rid of the ABC, Federal Police, definitely get rid of that. Big Air, um, we'll keep that for now. All right, so there we go. Um, so there was one here, Motorola Systems and also uh, CSE. So we'll look at the CSE Crosscom. So we'll filter everything out except for CSE Crosscom. All right. Uh, so what have we got? We've got um, about 16 frequencies. So we'll get rid of the repeater, the receive stuff. We just want to transmit stuff. So there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine frequencies. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so the simple way of doing this We'll set, we'll go back to ProTalk, um, ProScan. I'm just going to put it in the Onslow video. Um, but before we do that, we've got to find out what sort of system it is. So we'll copy and paste that into our browser. We'll do a search. FCC's got one, which is good. We'll see what that says. And sometimes it will tell you if it's DMR or not. That's analog. All right, so that's good to know. Um, we'll try this one here. This one could be, let's have a look. All right, this is data, this one. So that's probably another good one. Um, let's just, yeah, okay. So there's the analog frequencies there. And there's some data there. Let's try... We'll go back to 
the Motorola one, see what that one's got. All right, so this one here, let's have a look. <clears throat> All right, this is a Motorola Turbo DMR. So if you bought the, the DMR unlock for your radio, this is a good one to have. So let's work on this one, shall we? Um, we're still filtering. How many have we got? All right, so we'll filter out the receivers. We just want the transmitters. All right. Uh, first thing you do, F2 to edit. Get rid of the megahertz. Because it screws up the the copy and paste thing in Pro. So we're copying those. Oops. We're making a new system. And this one, we'll probably just put it as Motorola Turbo. Okay. Motorola Central Park. Then we're going to add a site. Call it Central Park. Then we're going to add frequencies. Get clipboard, import, done. Uh, oops. All right. Uh, this one we'll get rid of because uh, that's just a placeholder that the program puts in. Um, and for this one, what have I done? Uh, all right, so yeah, under this system, you're going to select ID search, just so it will search for any IDs out there. And that's basically how you do it. So hopefully that'll be helpful. If there's anything I've done wrong, or uh, you can see there's a better way of doing it, by all means, let me know. Um, I mean, we're all still learning, but hopefully that'll be enough to sort of get you started um, in this because it can be quite complicated, but you'll get you'll get the hang of it eventually. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, have a good one and stay safe.